Tiffle Dude here, and in this video, I'm going to show you two ways of adding audio and video to a PDF by embedding them in the PDF or by linking them to the PDF using two free PDF programs Foxit Reader and PDF Exchange Editor. Now, I'll just show you these PDFs side by side. Here is the one created in Foxit Reader. As you see, this is the new version, the updated free version where there is no audio or video link. But later we will be installing the portable version. However, you can still activate and use audio links. So this is the embedded one and you get audio controls, as you can see. This one is the linked version. You click on it and it pops out and you can control it. Here you can, in this version, go to comment and simply click on the file and add a linked version this way. I double click it and it opens up that way. So, and not forgetting the video as well. And that was me skiing. However, while you can play the audio in Acrobat Reader, you cannot play the video in Acrobat Reader. You would have to play it in Foxit. The same goes for the PDF Exchange Editor. You can play its audio in Adobe Acrobat DC, but you cannot play the video. Here is the audio here. And here is a linked audio. And I'll just zoom back in. Also, like the other one, you can attach a file by double clicking this. So there are many ways to add audio. Also, you've got video as well. That was me skiing again. Once again, the audio won't play, uh, the audio will play in Acrobat DC, but not the video. So this is kind of an update to my previous video, how to add audio to a PDF document using Free Foxit Reader. And the reason for this is because since December 2023 update, they removed the audio and video plugin. So in order to add audio, you need to download and install a previous version. Now there are two ways of getting back this function. One, you simply uninstall your present version and download any previous version and install that. Or two, you can download a portable previous version and run it only when you want to add audio or video. So you can keep the updated version and run this older version as and when you need it. So in the first part of this video, I'm going to show you where to get the older installation versions and the older portable versions, which I will be using to add audio and video. Then I will add an audio file, both embedded and a linked one. And please remember they only work with Foxit and Adobe Acrobat DC. In the second part, I'm going to show you how to add audio and video using the free version of PDF Exchange Editor. It too has a portable version offered on their website and it too only works with itself and Adobe Acrobat DC. So without further ado, let's go and do that. Now here we are in Foxit Reader and I want to replicate this image, you know, put the audios on this blank page, but I can't do it because I don't have the links because of this new version. So what we need to do is find the old version and there are two things we can do. Either uninstall this version and install an older version or just simply install a portable version and leave this as it is. What I'm going to do is actually look for the older installation version first. Now, if you look here, I'll put all the links down below. This is the version history of Foxit Reader. This top one here, this is the one we have that does not have the additional audio and video added. 
However, this older version, in fact, all these older versions do have it. So what you can do is simply copy this name here and put it in the search box here, which I've done, version Foxit. And you'll find there's a link here up to down and it's got the old version of it. So if we click on that link, you end up here and you can download it for free. I've already done that and you can see here it's downloaded. But before we do that, we have to uninstall this version. So I'll just click on this to show you that it is the version we want to get rid of. So here you can see this doesn't have the link. This is the new version. If you go to help and about, you can see the number 2328. So what we want to do is uninstall this and you can simply click here in the search, type control and go to control panel. And here, uninstall program, go to the Foxit reader, you can see the number there, and simply click uninstall. Are you sure you want to remove it? Yes. Remove the history, yes, yes, yes. And we get some link to why do you want to remove it? Because. And it's gone. You can see it's gone there. So what we do now is here is the one we downloaded. I'm going to double click that and install it. Okay, so I'll close this box and let's install. I accept. Just click everything. We will stop it from updating though. So let's click everything. Yes, yes, yes. And it says here, 14 day free trial. No, I don't want that. Do not install 14 day trial. Launch, yes. We're not going to register. And as you can see, we have the audio file. We can check this version by simply going to help and about, and you can see this is the older version. Now it says it's downloading. Uh oh, we don't want it to update. So when check the version, it says it's downloading. So quickly go to file preferences and go to the bottom and say updater. Do not download and install updates, ever, never, never. And now I go to About Foxit Reader, and you can see it says Restart to Update. But I don't want to update. So let's see what happens if I click off this and open it again. Okay, I still have the audio. I'll click on Help, About. And now you can see it just says check for update, but we're never ever going to do that because we never ever want to update. We always want this version because we have the audios and we can open a file here. And so that is a way to get the older version and keep it permanently from updating. So as you can see here, I've got the new version without the audio links available. So I'm gonna show you how I can keep this version and install a portable version to use as and when I like. That way I can keep the updated version. So let's close this off and simply type in here, old version Foxit portable. Now, if you go to the first one, I'm gonna right click and open with a new tab. Notice it has a version from 2022. That will work, that's fine. But why not go down to File Horse, right click, open that, and there you can see one is from July 2023. That's much better, so I'm going to click that one. 
And while I'm here, I should be able to click free download. If you're not sure, just give this uh, arrow and click on the, the first one there. And then click the green download. And you can see there is the number 15356 and start the download. And at the top right, you can see that it's downloading. And it is 204 megabytes. So now it's downloaded. Let's open up our download folder. And we're simply going to take this Foxit portable and put it on the desktop. And now I'm going to make a little folder to put it in. And that way you can always put it on a pen drive and take it with you and use it wherever you go. So I'm going to type portable Foxit and we can put the year 2023. Okay, so I'm going to put that now in the folder and it will install within this folder. So it won't install on your computer. Just double click it. You get this, don't worry about it. Just click more info, run anyway. It's perfectly fine. And click OK. Now I do believe with the other version, the July 22 version, you don't get this warning. I don't know why. But it really is safe. So click next. I agree. And you can see here is the folder that is going to be installed in. Now I'm not going to run it straight away because I want to show you where it is. So I'm going to click finish. So it isn't this icon anymore. It's in this folder here. So you click in this folder and double click this icon. So there you have your Foxy Reader and you can see the audio links and the link links. So let's open up our file. And they're a bit more visible now. So let's now create exactly the same audio file on this blank page next to it. Simply go to the audio link and draw a square. Usually a, a long rectangle will do. Then go to browse, look for your audio. I'm gonna choose this one. And it says show player here, but once we play it, it actually might not, and we'll have to do it uh, separately. So I'm going to click save. Now I'm going to click the hand tool and play it. Uh, you can decide which button you want to press, trust the document one time or always. Now, did you notice there were no controls there? So what you have to do is go back to the audio, click on it. And now when you right click and go to properties, you get a whole different view. We can actually change the color to red, make it dashed and medium, but mainly you have to go to the settings, go to edit, then playback settings. And here you can see it was not clicked. So you have to do it in a secondary way. Now, one thing I want you to know that if you wish to use current playback as default, uh, you can click this on the installed version on your PC, but you can't use this function on the portable version. It will just make your uh, Foxit reader crash all the time. I tried it and it kept crashing. So don't click this. Just click OK. Close. And now when I click it, there you could see the controls. So that's excellent. Now, obviously you can still move it around. So anyone who wishes to select it can move it like this. But if you want to lock it, you should go to the properties and click here, locked, and then lock it. And now it cannot be moved by anyone. So that's great. Also, if you want it to say click here to play, you are going to have to add this yourself with an image or text. 
So just put a typewriter tool, click, and then, uh, you know, just make it as large as you want and simply move it inside here. And then people will know to click to play the audio. So that's the first audio and that's embedded. Check out my YouTube video earlier one where I show you this and I show you how it works on an iPad with Foxit Reader only. Now this one, the, the link one, you can choose where it pops out. So let's draw this one. Uh, we can leave the color. Let's make it blue for a change. Um, and this time we want to open and execute a file. You can use the links to go to different pages, but we're going to open and execute a file. Click next. And we're going to go to the second one. And now when I click on the hand tool, I click it. It says, do you want to open this file? Yes. And there it is. And it's opened up in my preferred media player. You can choose yours. Once again, you'll have to put click in there yourself. And the final one, this um, pin, you can do that even on the new version. You just simply click the pin, uh, get our next, and there it is. And also you can lock it with properties. Uh, I can't see the properties at the moment, but you can change the style and that. So if we go to the hand tool and just double click, it will say, do you want to open it? Yes. And there you have it. The final thing we need to show you is the video. Once again, you simply go back to home, click on the audio and video, make a square box for the video, browse for the video. It must be MP4. And I think there are other ones that it will play, maybe dot movie or something. Show player controls. And once I go to play it, So you could see there were no controls. So once again, we have to go to the audio video link, click on it, right click properties and go to the edit playback settings again, show controls. Okay. Close. And on the hand tool, I click it. And there's me crashing. Once again, you have to add words. And notice it will not play in Adobe Acrobat Reader. So if I save this document now, so let's see if it works with Adobe Acrobat. Yeah. And here you can see uh, the annotations. And if I click it, you get the choice, trust this document like you did in Foxit. Click again. <laughs> So you can move it, pause it, excellent. Also the the one that LinkedIn is there. And the video, let's check the video one. Well, obviously this double link one will work as well. The one with the pin, but the video does not work. Show it now. As you can see, it won't show the video, but you can hear it which is why I put an X for Acrobat Reader. Okay, so there you have it. That's how to open it up with a portable version and still retain your original Foxit Reader. Now let's move on to see how we use it in a different PDF reader called PDF Exchange Editor. Now very quickly, I'm going to show you how we open it in PDF Exchange Editor you can go to this web address here and obviously you can buy it, but you can also download a portable version. Uh, the best version is this top one, the installer, but we're going to download 64 bit. Remember it must have OCR. This says no OCR. Why would you even bother with that? So click this one. It's one of the best versions ever. It will automatically download. You see it up here downloading. I've already done it before, so I'm going to, click off that. 
Now, remember, there are lots of portable apps here as well. You can go to this website and you can find lots and lots and lots of portable apps, all legal for you to use on your pen drive, on computers that are not yours, that have been protected. So once again, we're going to make a folder for this. I'm just going to copy the name and make a folder here. New folder. And I'm going to drag this in the folder. And in that folder, you simply right click and unzip it. Or if you want, double click on it. And, and that's what you've got. But you need to unzip it, obviously. So let's right click and extract all. Extract here. And when that's done, you can see it is in that folder let's just open that folder there it is it's in this little folder here so you just open that and you can run it straight from here double click and here it is the nice thing about this um what you call it pdf editor is that you can actually change the top view from this to classic view and we'll show you why that might be useful later. So first of all, let's drag our PDF in there. This was made by PDF Exchange. And here we are. So let's go to the bottom, make it two page. Now you might be wondering, what, what's this um, stamp here? Well, in order to use these top features, all of the top features on here, you can use it as a professional if you don't mind having a couple of stamps. And you might think, well, why are there no stamps on the other page? Well, that's because I simply made uh, a little box, uh, a little clear box, and I just put it over there. And I'll show you how to do that as well. So we're going to add an audio file like we did before. And like I say, you've got two views here. You've got this view or the classic tools view. This is really good for teaching. You can see all the tools at once. But we'll go back to the rhythm view. Go to comments. And you can see add sound. And it warns you you're going to get a demo stamp. Yes. Actually, I've already been stamped, so it doesn't matter. Click here to look for the file. will be the first one. And it says here, show controls. In this program, it actually does remember the controls. So there you go. So go back to the hand tool and I can click. And there's my controls, there's my audio. Remember, you can only play on this and Acrobat DC. Doesn't really work with Foxit. Once again, if you want to do a link version, you can go to home. And there's a link thing here. So let's draw a square um, and go to advance. We need to go to advance. And we say we want to play a sound, open a file. I think that's what we want to do. Open a file. And we'll browse that file, which will be this second one. Uh, click OK. Click OK. And now when we click the hand tool, it jumps out and says, oh, I'm, I'm going to play this. But we can't see it. So what we might have to do is go back to the link and right click on it and go to properties and say, OK, let's make the color border width about two so we can see it. Uh, and that's it. So there's the properties. So actually now we can see it. So if we click on it, we can just jump out. It's worth reminding you that once again you can right click here in order to make sure people click the device. Once again you've got this paper clip if you wish to do it that way you go to command or comment and you can attach a file like that. Just click do the third one and that is there. Simply double click and the file pops out and once again for the video it's the same but here instead of 
add sound slash video, it's, it's got its own square. And you simply open that up, go to browse, there's the video. Uh, make sure it says show controls. Okay. And then here it actually shows you the picture. So I can click there. Uh, if there are no controls for some reason, you can always just right click and it'll say show controls. So you can turn them off or turn them on. So PDF exchange. Now, as for this stamp that you get, I'm going to click save. It's going to say I have a stamp. What you can do is go to the square. I think it's the text box. And once you've clicked on it, you can go to format and make it have um, no border because otherwise it, it has a border like that and you don't want that. You want it with no border. So if I click on it again, see with this format thing and the home view, it's much better to have it in the classic view because if you have classic, I can see with my hand, I can click on it and I can see all the options underneath. It's brilliant. So I can say, okay, I don't want a border. I'll have no points. And now you can't see the square. So now I can put it there and it's hiding the watermark. And you can just move it like that. Control C, copy, Control V, copy. And I've got another one. Oh no, I haven't. Maybe I'll just make my own. So here's the text box. But notice if I do it again, it's got the red square. In order to make it permanently no square, you have to click on the text box and then click no points. And then every time I make a square, there is no border. And just do that on the hand tool and you're ready to rock and roll. And while you see this yellow bar at the top, once I click save and close it, and I'll reopen it again. You'll see there's no bar at the top. It, it still has these links, as you see. And if you click on them, uh, it will take you to the website to purchase it. So it's only $56, but I would advise you to go for the $72 as you can do so much more with it. Okay, that's all from me. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you've learned something how to add audio and maybe you've chosen one or two of these PDFs to use. Look out for my next videos where I'm gonna show you the four different PDFs I use and why I use them and why one of them or two of them I pay for but the other two I don't need to. So look out for those videos. See you on the next video. Ciao for now.